Arsenal is at the top of the league right now with nine points, three wins, scoring nine and conceding two. And of course, it really depends on Man City next game. And welcome back to this Arsenal podcast post uh, post game segment or post game thought. My general thought on the game and of course the build up to the game as well. And of course, we travel away from home against the Cherries, uh, Bournemouth, and of course, we beat them three nil in the end of course a very comfortable win and i don't remember the last time where we where we played two away matches in a row and not conceding one i don't remember that part because honestly we have a very poor away form record for the past decades or so but you know what i'm glad that we got the win and of course more more importantly um uh yeah of course getting the win and at the same time uh god just the team is so much different compared to last season of course uh you know what last season this fixtures we would have probably you know what we're at the bottom of the league table and right now we're at the top of the league table again depending on man city's result but honestly this game is is very fun to watch for sure again um again coming to this game I wasn't expecting too much I was expecting a win but I wasn't expecting this level of comfort per se because again very poor form record uh, away from record in the past you know past years and finally turning up like that in like even though yeah it's a, against Bournemouth they uh, recently got promoted but again you should never 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 look down on you know any Premier League teams because honestly Premier League is so unpredictable in a lot of ways where small teams can probably probably destroy a big team as well but of course, we took this. We, we we took this. We took this game pretty much like very like personally in in a lot of ways. And of course, Martin Odegaard, my captain, finally. Of course, he definitely do, do improve um, compared to the Crystal Palace game. Taking more taking more shots, no matter like no matter what the situation was. And of course, actually, I I don't want to go into the game right now. But looking at the lineup, I already knew it was going to be the same lineup. And of course, arguably, a lot of people want Tom Yasu back in the in, in, into the lineup, and I, I would understand that. But the fact that we have been playing so well with Ben White on the right hand side, why not just stick with the formation? You know, like we can rotate players. You know, when there's like an injury happen, when somebody's unfit, or we're playing in the uh, you know the cup tied. But honestly, I don't see a point of changing the squad at the moment because just i i just don't think it's necessary to be honest just if it ain't if it ain't broke don't fix it that's pretty much the quote that i've been you know thinking of or or you know a quote that i think is very relatable in in a lot of ways the fact that arsenal have been playing so well for the past two games especially at the start of the leak um i don't think i don't see a point of changing anything uh, unless there's some cir- circumstances that you know come up but honestly uh, but you know what more importantly yeah even the first 11 didn't change at all but look at the bench the bench has so much quality and of course uh, Pepe wasn't in there because apparently there might be a move to uh, you know send him back to France uh, to OG Nice I believe so oh well potential teammate with Aaron Ramsey of course but of course, uh, yeah, Nicholas Pepe leaving. I, I, you know what? I'm happy. I'm happy for him. He needs to play. Apparently, Arsenal is not quite of a club for him, especially his its body language and just the stuff that he does. He, he does just doesn't really fit into Arteta's system. So I'm happy to see him leave. To be honest, so there's that, and that's why he was not on the bench. But Fabio Fiera, oh my God, everybody has been hyping about him, and of course, I'm excited to see him. He did play, uh, I think, I believe the first half on the right hand side uh, during the week uh, for U21 or U23. And of course, Cedric came on as well, and Smith Rowe came on as well. But, you know, Cedric's not in the line, uh, it's not on the bench as usual. And But having Smith Rowe, Enketia, El Nenny, Laconga, and of course, having uh, Paul, uh, <laughs> Paul Tierney, Karen Tierney. 
uh, Rob Holding and also um, Tom Yasu. It's just so refreshing, you know. It's the fact that it, it gives you a lot more options in terms of how you want to use them in different situations, and of course. And you, you just gotta love that. And I don't even remember the last time where Arsenal have a bench f- filled with quality players. And the only time I would remember is probably the uh, you know every time we play in the Carabao Cup against like lower lower league side, you would put a lot of youngsters in the first eleven and having some senior players and on the bench just in case. But this is none of that bullcrap to be honest. But Right now, we have a pretty much a, 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 a perfect squad. Well, not quite perfect, but, but you guys know what I mean. It's just full of quality, and you just got to love that. Compared to last season, completely different. You have to fill in a few youngsters uh, into the team. Again, it's, it, it didn't really quite work out in the end, but I'm glad the signings that we made definitely strengthened in a lot of areas, and of course, especially in terms of the bench as well. I know a lot of people might... Like might not think might not highly rate uh bench players but honestly in this in this situation in this season i think we really do need that especially we are aiming for champions league football plus we have to up our game raise our game in that in another level so having such a quality bench it's amazing and going to the game again first 10 minutes at uh, first 10 minutes completely dominated I, at first i thought you know what a, a a very a very clear a very clear path where arsenal was trying to attack on the left hand side that is where the goal came from you gotta you gotta give credits to uh gabriel jesus the first goal he chests it down and then just skip around a few players and of course pass it to Martinelli take a shot a very, very good shot forces the goalkeeper to make the save and Mar- uh, and Odegaard was right there to make a very like make a tap in again like Odegaard right there at the right time just put yourself in the box you know what you would never know when the ball just bounces back to you and uh, with a very clear chance that's exactly what happened so yeah Odegaard makes it one nothing and then later on Odegaard makes it 2 nothing, and of course this time we shift our attack to the right hand side and of course Ben White with an overlapping run of course you got to give credit for Bukayo Saka pa- giving that overlapping pass to Ben White he finds Gabriel Jesus was a very good touch he was thinking about going for it but Martin Odegaard was again right there at the right time puts that one in and uh you know two nothing again this is you know of course there is an interview about Odegaard not taking that chance against Crystal Palace in the set yes he's gonna he's only gonna improve and that's exactly what happened today he improved put himself into a very dangerous position and go for a shot and he's not he's not a bad finisher like we all know that but in a lot of ways you just need to take go you know go for goals and, and see how it goes because you would never know to be honest right when you like every time when i for example when i play football inside i play as a striker inside of zone yeah you're not having much of a game but when you put yourself into a very dangerous position and just try to go for a shot you would never know you know it deflect the shot it's still a chance you know maybe it goes out for a corner still a chance but you just need to maximize the number of chances that we have and of course Odegaard did maximize our chances that lead, lead into goal and later on for for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the uh, the first half nothing much happened pretty much we were walking in the park uh just a lot of possession you know we we have been like we completely dominated pretty much the first half and again uh, a lot of times where I felt like we could have been a little bit more uh, more progressive more like, more adventurous in terms of like runs and passes but in the end i i, I can see arsenal was trying to you know would rather to be calm in a lot of those situations decided to pa- pass back and of course a very solid uh a s- solid performance by sinchenko as well i think personally he might be my man of the match for sure again he contributed a lot on the left hand side again he tracked back he's very calm on the ball every time when we when we got hit on a counter attack we were so calm at the back of Saliba I believe he made two uh he he believe I believe he made two important um 
important interception. Of course, Sinchenko at the back, covering very calm. You know, not 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 allowing opposition to uh, lose his feet. And you just gotta love that, to be honest. And 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 you just gotta give credit to Sinchenko. Probably one of the best game uh, he, he put on uh, for Arsenal so far. Even though it's quite early, and I know it's it's still Bournemouth. And then later on in the second half, I was like, you know what? Our, of course, Arsenal is going to like try and kill the game by scoring a couple more. And of course, within 10 minutes, William Saliba, holy crap. When he took that shot, I thought, oh, the goalkeeper kind of saved it. Or I think it was just went over the bar. Because uh, the ball and the bar kind of like has the same color. Couldn't w- really see it clearly. But then when I, and then when I just hear people reacting, I'm like, ah, oh, like... Holy crap, like the crowd was cheering and holy, holy shit. I literally got literal like goose, like goosebumps. You know how good of a finish that was, especially coming from, from Saliba. You weren't, you weren't expecting that at all. You, okay, you expect him to be in the box, attack the ball, tap in, headers, whatever. But of course the whole sequence Oh, that play. Oh, you know what? Before going to the whole sequence, it, it's really funny. It, I, I literally laughed out loud when Ben White trying to kick Anthony, <laughs> just trying to trip him because Anthony was holding the ball, trying to like like walk with the ball away, trying to like stall the time a little bit from, from uh, I think from, from Martin Odegaard. I think because Saka won that challenge um, or got, got fouled, and Ben White trying to like, you know, kicked or tripped. Anthony, it, it, it's really funny. Like it, it, it's like a very for me. It's a, it, it was a perfect a minute and a half or two minutes, just to see like oh, it was like, like comedical. Yeah, for sure at the back, and then all of a sudden we just score and then goosebumps and then just like tears of joy. To be honest, I'm not even exaggerating because, again, set piece we score from in other set pieces. Like, could you even believe that? Yeah, it's not quite of a direct set piece, but then the movement off the ball was amazing. I think in the early first half, Odegaard trying to play a uh, a free kick to Granit Xhaka. And Granit Xhaka, when you look at him from a replay, he was pretty much very behind the line, to be honest. He was just trying to make a last-minute dash. Not really last-minute dash, but it's kind of, he is acting like um, um, uh, this... Um, illusion to the whole Bournemouth defense for sure because everybody was like marking Partey, Gabriel, Saliba they of course they forgot about Granit Xhaka of course he sprint to the box of voice he's not the fastest player I'm not expecting him to make it there but at least this is where we're going in terms of set pieces in terms of like from free kicks not just from corner kick but oh like that the, the third goal the way how again it just kind of uh, Martinelle whips it to Granit Xhaka and just you know just laid it off to Saliba <laughs> and just effort and he just effortlessly just put the ball curled that with a little bit of dip to the right and then it created it, it, and he scores like a perfect perfect goal right there as a defender you don't see that and of course I I'm really really happy for him because Last game, he uh, last game I, b- I believe I think he might misjudge a little bit of his steps uh, to his own goal. Yeah, last week he had an own goal, but today he scored beauty. And so far, yeah, I know we only score score nine goals, but that's definitely um, uh, probably goal of the season so far. Even though it's only like what the ninth goal of the season but you just I, i'm just really happy like even when i'm talking about it it's it just puts a smile on my face because it's how good he was today don't not like don't even like yeah you can okay like the strike beautiful but defensively has been solid you know like the fact that he didn't really quite you know, lose his footings in a lot of situations, and he's very calm on the ball as well. Like, same as Sinchenko. You gotta give more credit to Sinchenko again. Yeah, he, he didn't really con- like he didn't really uh, he didn't really contribute to any of the goals, but the fact that he was very calm in the middle, orchestrating plays from the middle, 
And there's a lot of times where he just kind of tucked into the right-hand side. As a left back, received the ball commanding for the ball. And just kind of dis- distributed to left and right, left and right. You just got to love that. You know, it, it, it gives us another way to play football again. And you just got to love it because, again, we used to be very predictable in terms of how we put up our play, in terms of how we set ourselves against, uh, you know, when we attack. But this time it's different. You rotate players from kind of like a position to position. Everybody just kind of push forward. Yeah, you might compromise some of the position, but at the same time, you gain a lot of advantages in the other position as well. For example, Granit Xhaka used to sit pretty deep as a CDM. Right now, he is arguably one of the better, I'm not saying the best, but one of the better box-to-box midfielders in the world. He doesn't He doesn't have, he, he has the intelligence. Of course, he doesn't have the speed, but he does have the intelligence and all the passes and stuff. Of course, you put him forward, and of course, alongside Martinelli, him, Odegaard, Saka, and also get, uh, uh, Jesus, you got five attackers pretty much, and you put Sinchenko from left back, you know, to like to to center mid. It gives a little bit more of a control in the middle when balls just kind of comes back to the you know to the midfield. You can he can support Partey if he wants, and of course Ben White again a very good ball playing defender kind of tucks in in the middle sometimes but i think in this game um he kind of tucks into uh, like sit back a little bit and it just kind of works you just gotta love that and of course in in the end like after saliba scoring that goal um uh yeah there are a few chances fear are you call it off but honestly i think it's just kind of bull crap jesus scored that fourth one i think Honestly, like those type of like tight call should have been should have been on instead because it doesn't really give us too much of an advantage to be honest. Like that's the point of a VAR. It's even Ars Vanga said it before. If it doesn't make much of a difference, like it's like a milli milliliters millimeters, why not just let it play on? Because again, it's just very tight and you can't be you cannot be absolute absolute be accurate in terms of that measurement and honestly i just think that should have been a goal yes i did put gabriel jesus in my fpl fantasy premier league but it's just a bummer because i honestly do want him to score goals of course he picked up a yellow card and i thought okay he's gonna get subbed off here eventually right but then i think when i look at him he didn't get subbed off in the end but instead and Ketty came on i think he played on the left hand side for a little bit and then uh smith will came on for odegaard i thought fabio fiera is going to come on for odegaard because that's pretty much a direct substitution and tom yasu came uh came on for uh ben white again um just kind of losing a little bit of fluidity in the middle again i don't see if Smith Rowe as a number 10 player, despite a lot of Arsenal fans might say that or think that, but I I think I see him more of a player who plays on the left hand side or, depl- uh, or deploys as a wide midfielder. I think Fabio Fiera seems to be very good on the ball, and I just love that. But you know what? That's really not quite of a not quite of a issue, not quite of a topic. Kind of off topic a little bit. And of course, Gabriel Jesus eventually shifted to the right-hand side. And of course, Kieran Tierney played on the left wing row. But of course, he dropped kind of like deeper than Martinelli in all cases for defensive reasoning. And of course, Sambi Lakonga, you know what? You got to give it, give it to this guy. In the Arsenal Amazon All of Nothing documentary, he was frustrated not playing. He said, he literally said, I was playing. And he was quite upset about it. And of course, uh, and kept it with a very strong leadership mentality saying that, so what? Get on with it, you know? Just train hard. And of course, yeah, uh, again, 3 nothing. Uh, you just you just got to put on the youngsters, for example. So 
yeah, of course, ideally I want Vieira to come on, but you know what? I, I would rather not to rush him. It's still kind of early, to be honest. You have like the first 45 minutes. He might need another 45 minutes in the under-23 squad very soon. But yeah, eventually, yeah, Gabriel Jesus, just great game in general. Again, just game changer. When you compare him to Lacassette, completely different player. He's more agile, agile, more like speedy, technical, like technically gifted. That's all you need from Arsenal number nine. And I thought when last season we linked up with uh, Cav Lewin and also Isak, I thought Arsenal was trying to play that kind of a um, diagonal, not diagonal ball, just kind of crosses in the middle to like like to Isak or Cav Lewin. Both of them are very good in the air. It turns out it was more of a link-up play and kind of uh, make yourself to be an attacking midfielder sometimes or deploy, like, deploy on the wide side as well. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole game again. Just, just love the whole vibe of it. And yeah, okay, let's talk about players. Aaron Ramsdale, again, having uh, didn't really do much, but I feel like he's always one mistake away from causing a whole like disaster at the back. There's one where he was like complaining. I think it was Anthony, or I think it was Anthony or Lerma, trying to like block his way while he's trying to kick the ball, or he's trying to like kick the ball to uh, to Martinelli. Instead, he missed you. And thank God, I th- yeah, Lerma. Yeah, I think it was Anthony, but Lerma in the end. Uh, disguised that one but other than that Ramsdale was, was was doing fine very good save uh, against Moore but uh, he's trying to be safe and sorry you, know, you just gotta love that as a goalkeeper it's just that when, qu- when you weren't quite sure where uh, where your goalpost is just just kind of knocked it away you know and yeah and Ben White did a, Ben White did a good job again uh, a very well well working by him and Saliba Gabriel insane partnership Sinchenko my man of the match very calm on the ball all the time um, Par- Partey again very calm as well just another it's I really hope that he's not gonna get he's not gonna get injured throughout the whole like throughout the whole campaign really hate to see that because this game also shows why he is so important to our system his calmness his technique his passing his physique his physical just you know just perfect that's what you need from number six from him Odegaard again arguably can be my man of the match but I feel like Sinchenko might be slightly better off the ball on the ball as well and Chaka didn't really quite do much but did a job uh, didn't uh, of course with an assist, but Kyle Saka. I know a lot of people are kind of like, kind of have a dig at him because you know, doesn't have a lot of like he didn't haven't scored a goal, hasn't had an assist yet. But again, the second build up goal that he had was honestly perfect. And yeah, you you might have what you might have Martinelli start to shine, Gabriel Jesus start to shine as well. Then you leave players like Saka kind of like a little bit behind. But you can never, never, never disregard uh, disregard the stuff that he does for the team, especially <clears throat> especially build up defensive uh, defensive uh, defensive ability as well. He tracked back a lot of times, and uh, Martinelli again. Uh, he slight. He's a little bit off, um, especially in the second half. I, I'm pretty sure he, he looks like he's getting a little bit tired when he starts to like you know like running up and down the pitch. But uh, and of course he had a shot where it was well it was like completely off. Then he and then I'm pretty sure he knew after that shot he knew that he's gonna get subbed off and he's fine with it, which is totally fine. Again, we have an insane bench. Why not just use it, right? And then in the end, Gabriel Jesus again a very good strong performance. One assist, no goals. Totally fine. Again, a very good a very good game overall. But uh, yeah, the bench didn't really have to talk much because it didn't really do quite much. But instead, just kind of focus. They focus on the game, focus on that clean sheet. That's the thing that we we like to talk about is the clean sheet. Like Leicester, I felt like if we did a little bit better defensively, we would have gotten ourselves a clean sheet. 
but you know what away from home getting clean sheet it's it's uh you don't usually put those words together for arsenal so yeah uh that's pretty much my thoughts to the game against bournemouth very good game in general very comfortable game and i'm off to my holiday or my vacation so next week uh same thing pretty much against a uh, Fulham away, uh, not actually Fulham back at the Amber Stadium, and of course, Fulham seems to be a very very tough team. Not gonna lie, they won against Nottingham Forest. Is it today? No, I don't think it's Nottingham Forest. I think some other team. I didn't really. I think oh, I think they beat Wolves today, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong, but they beat them three two. Leno started, and of course, Leno's going back to the uh, Emirates very likely, and Mitrovic is going to be a big threat to our snow for sure so i really do do want to see i really do want to see gabriel and also saliba just trying to like hold him up hopefully he doesn't give him a lot of chances because fulham seems to be i don't based on their form right now i doubt they're going to get relegated this season they might be turned up to be a mid-table team who like who knows he, they might be another Sheffield United, you know. They got promoted, did very well. Next season got relegated, but it doesn't seem like Fulham's gonna it's gonna be like that this season. But we will see. So best of luck to Arsenal, and of course, uh, hope you guys enjoy this segment. I really, I really do enjoy it. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you guys are an Arsenal fan. Feel free to let me know down in the comment section below uh, what you think about this game and I'll see you guys in a bit.